All right, hello guys. Yes, so uh, welcome to chapter two. Um, chapter two is about how the heroes from Prophecies uh, and Menlo and so forth uh, end up involved in the story of factions. Uh, it's not entirely about that, but yeah, I'm going to be doing so. I'm going to be doing that. So both Peter Redhill and Tom are going to be in the same let's play. I've actually got uh, the characters on different accounts, so um, when they meet each other and stuff like that, they will actually be able to meet each other, which is pretty cool. So. Uh, last we heard, Togo sent a missive to um, Menlo, an old student of his. Uh, and you might remember way back in pre-searing Ascalon, um, it was like the fourth episode, maybe even less than that. I said that Togo has quite an interesting history, but you don't see very much more, very much about Togo until you reach factions. Um, and that feels like that was a long, long, long time ago now. Uh, but yeah, so here we are, we're actually doing it. So let's speak to this guy first, what's Sergio? You might remember, probably not. But uh, if you watched the last series, um, you might have remembered me mentioning this quest here, Menlo's Request. So let's cook it. Oh, it's you, Peter. Menlo has been looking all over for you. Apparently, he has received a letter with some disturbing news. A letter sent by an old friend of his from Cantha. He asked me to tell you to meet him out in the North Kryta province, if I happen to see you. He's probably waiting out there right now. Menlo looked pretty upset. You may want to go talk to him. Okay, I'll find out what this is all about. So you might be wondering sort of uh, the timeline, sort of when, when is this taking place? How long ago did Prophecies happen? Uh, and you remember right at the end of Prophecies, if you saw it, uh, Glint said at the end that um, she said something like, long into the season of the Scion, uh, the Flame Seeker Prophecies are complete. And the season of the Scion is basically autumn. So uh, Prophecies ended in late autumn. And the main bulk of the factions campaign takes place uh, in the following year, in 1078, um, after the Exodus. So basically this is pretty quickly after the end of uh, the last story. Um, it takes, they said, it takes about two to three weeks uh, with good winds to sail to Cantha. So basically this is late autumn, I reckon Peter will get to, to factions just as basically uh, winter's starting and then the plot takes place over the next year so that's kind of where we are in the timeline uh, let's go find Menlo so we've gone back in time a little bit uh, all that stuff in the monastery sorry yeah so uh, all that stuff at the monastery probably took place at the same time as um, Peter was up in the Fire Island chain and taking out the uh, Titans and stuff like that so yeah that's kind of what's been going on let's speak to Menlo sorry about that weird glitch there. It keeps being weird and stopped filming. I'm, I'm a little bit worried about it. Anyway, Menlo says, In my younger days, I trained in the distant land of Cantha, at the famous Xingji Monastery. I studied under Master Togo himself, and he's almost as famous as the monastery he runs. Though it, though it has been years since I have seen Master Togo and Cantha, its lands will remain in my heart always. I could not be the monk I am today if not for the lessons I learned there. So uh, he went there and then he came to uh, Ascalon later on. So Menno's request. Hello Peter, I'm glad First Watch Sergio found you. I'm afraid I have some bad news. I've received a letter from my old teacher in Cantha, Master Togo. Maybe you've heard of him. It seems a violent and horrific plague has spread like wildfire through the streets of Cantha and threatens to destroy all of Kaineng's city. He has asked that I organise a group of skilled heroes and take them with me to Cantha, where we can fight this evil at its source. I will be travelling there shortly. If you're up to the task, talk to Jija Tai in Lion's Arch. Book a passage and meet me there. Okay, so this is quite a simple quest to get you there. Um, we're going to run back out and Jija Tai. Uh, did I meet her before in this in the last Let's Play? Did I do that? Can't remember. But uh, basically she's out on this beach over here, so um, for anyone who didn't watch the previous series, this is the northern continent. Uh, we're here, this is Kryta, you'll probably hear some of the Canthans talking about Kryta quite soon. Uh, and uh, Cantha is way down here, way south past here. And the third game takes place south here, so yeah. Alright, so we're at the ships. There's a guy called Lion Guard Figo, I don't think that's the guy we want to talk to. There's the ship with the Orion symbol on it. Of course, Lion's Arch um, becomes the PvP area in Guild Wars 2. Uh, if you've read the novels, I just recently read The Edge of Destiny, and there's quite a lot in Lion's Arch in that book. It was an okay book. I uh, I didn't really like how much combat and stuff they put into it, though. I thought that was a bit dry. Anyway, here's uh, Jijai. Sorry about that. Um, we have a saying in Cantha: "May the heavens attend to your needs; I shall attend to your wants." 
I promise my traders will do all that is in their power to see to it that you can buy anything your heart desires. What business do you have to discuss? So she's got various quests. What does she say if we just want to talk? Yes, let us talk. Perhaps we will find it profitable. Who are you? I'm Jijai Tai, mistress of seven merchant fleets, granted trading rights in the land of the north by the authority of the Emperor of Cantha. Where is Cantha? Cantha lies south, across the ocean, past the ruins of Ore, past the islands of fire, past the crystal lands of burning sun, and beyond the clashing seas. Only the greatest sailors dare such a journey, I assure you. She's probably lying there, I mean, there's lots of trade that goes on between Cantha and, um, and uh, Kryt over there. Let's discuss something else. So, what brings you here? Some find their inspiration in the glory of a temple, but to me there is no greater altar than a bustling marketplace. Some people think that material goods are the way we hide from ourselves, but I say the opposite is true. After all, what better measure of a man is there than what he does and what he does not value? But why Lion's Arch? Where else should a Canton fleet land? Ascalon is in ruins. Or has sunk into the sea. The dwarves don't properly appreciate the imported goods. No, it had to be Kryta, and there is no greater city in all of Kryta than Lion's Arch. As they say, in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. Uh, there is probably another place that this woman could have gone to, but I think because factions came out before um, Nightfall, the third campaign, uh, they sort of didn't want to mention it. But there is obviously another land called Alona, uh, just south of the, des of the desert. It's not as far south as Canther is, but um, yeah, she probably could have gone there. They're very wealthy there. Anyway, uh, Menlo's request. So a plague really does threaten my homeland? Ordinarily I would chalk that up to rumour and speculation, but I have heard similar disturbing news from other merchants of late. People I trust. If you are willing to go to Cantha just to help my people, I am sure I can help you find a berth on one of my own vessels. Okay, so take me to Cantha. I'm not sure whether clicking this is going to take us straight there, but because this is such a long journey, um, a lot happens actually in the city while we're on the boat. So I will see you on Tom in just a second once we get on the boat. You'll be travelling on a ship, but to the distant lands of Cantha to the south. By doing so, you will leave the lands of Tyria behind and arrive near Kaineng Center, the heart of Cantha's capital city. If you feel the need, you can return via boat travel to Tyria at any time. Are you ready to depart? Yeah, let's go. Alright, so we will see Peter soon enough. Um, but for now, he's going to get on the boat. Let's go. Oh my god, there's another one. Jesus Christ, they've got to stop doing this. Your entire party is about to be moved. Let's do it. Let's go. Meanwhile, wow, was I just filming that? Okay, meanwhile, Tom makes it across. Okay, so here we are. This is the city. Uh, first impression, your first impression is probably going to be what mine was, that this place uh, looks pretty cool, but um, pretty quickly, uh, this place really starts to get you down, it's so depressing, the plague really, really, really does a number on this city, uh, like you wouldn't believe. Uh, oh, here's first mate Zhang. Hello, this ship sails from Kaineng to Xingji, where you will find the famed monastery of the same name, would you like to book passage? No thanks, I've got business to deal with. So. Uh, quick recap what are we doing here uh, Togo wants to inform his brother who if you remember right back at the start Yijo seemed to think his brother that uh, Togo and the Emperor re were related so maybe there's something in that um, he wants to speak to his brother about this and all of the headmasters and us have been sent along us and Suru so let's this is headmaster Graco this is the ranger guy so let's see what's going on. Uh, the spirit of nature herself must be outraged at the corruption that runs through these lands. Greetings, Tom. I trust your trip was uneventful. Master Togo would like to meet, would like you to meet him in Waijun Bazaar. He asked that you make haste. Okay, so we're going out into the marketplace here. This is the first uh, outpost out here in the city. The city is quite a weird place because. Um, a lot of the time you can be out in explorable areas where usually enemies are just ganging up on you and trying to kill you but the explorable areas are full of merchants and they kind of act like outposts because there's no enemies around and stuff like that so it really does help to bring this feel of a, a big seamless um, uh, city together uh, have we got anything I want to sell? yeah we do, wow look at all these armors I got <laughs> alright let's identify them first Oh well, would you look at that, look, we got two, um, I identified two of them, and both of these armors have got runes of minor deadly arts on them. Deadly arts is something that uh, we as assassins actually use, it's one of our attributes. So I might as well salvage that off and use that. So we'll use our expert salvage kit, 
to salvage off this assassin rune of minor deadly arts. Now we have the rune and we can apply that to one of our pieces of armor just as we did before. So now we've got, I'm not actually using any deadly art skills at the moment, but uh, that could come in handy. Anyway, let's sell the stuff, shall we? Okay, and there's a collector here. Uh, Attendant Nashu. I will have you know that you're an interrupting a ministry official. That is right, I work for the Minister of Air and I am an official business at the moment. We are investigating this supposed plague outbreak and it is my duty to collect samples from the allegedly inf infected individuals. I would like you to make yourself useful. I suggest you bring me five of the cysts and I will give you this in return. So he's got some nice daggers he can give us. These do 7 to 17 damage. What do our current ones do? 3 to 6. Fuck, we're still using the 3 to 6. Okay, maybe I'll get his dirts. Actually, do you know what? Uh, we can get some new armor and stuff as well. Uh, the, here are the henchmen. If we go north, we can get to the main, main place. Right now, we're just at the marketplace you see here. Uh, let's read this. Uh, a favourite destination for locals and foreign visitors alike, this bustling marketplace is the place to find locally made trinkets, fresh produce and fish, and traditional Canton delicacies such as pickled vermin tongue. Lovely. Alright, so yeah, this is where we are in the world now. Um, and if we if we go north to here, there's a big, big, big city. It's kind of like the Canton's line arch. Lines Arch, and we'll get all kinds of stuff there. So I'd like to go there. So let's uh, let's grab some people. These henchmen all have different stuff to say to us now. By the way, uh, now that we're in a new surrounding, uh, as we go through the city, I will sort of slowly talk to them and see what they have to say. You'll notice that the party window is now uh, the party size. Sorry, is now eight. So we can have eight people. Pretty cool. Uh, let's get Headmaster Bang. I'd always rather have the Headmaster over the uh, Kai Yang. Alright, so uh, yeah, let's go north. Uh, the main quest wants us to go south, but we'll go north for the second just to get that stuff. And there's quite a few interesting things here, so let's go out into the Buck Deck Byway. Okay, so this is the Buck Deck Byway. Uh, it's quite an interesting area. Like I just said, it's like a lot of it, there aren't any enemies. In fact, we can get to the uh, main capital city now, uh, the big place like Lion's Arch. Uh, we can get there without doing any fighting at all. Um, now the si fruit can be hard to come by these days now that the plague has slowed trade coming from Krita. So uh, yeah, this place is kind of like Xingji. It's absolutely chock full of quests and people to talk to and just loads and loads and loads and loads of stuff. Um, and all of those quests together, they really give you quite a nice feel for... Uh, stay alert, we can't be everywhere and these are dangerous times. And they really, really do flesh out uh, what this city's like. I mean, oh, there's Mi ah, here's Minister Ong Shang. If you remember Ong Shang Island, I said we might meet the guy. Uh, this is him. He says, if you want to speak to me, you must first learn to spell my name. It's spelled the way it sounds, Ong Shang. Ong Shang, say it with me. Let the beautiful sound fill your ears. <laughs> okay, uh, very big headed. But yeah, uh, like I was saying, I mean, I was looking at all these quests, but I'm just, I'm not really going to do very many of them. There's one quest chain I'm going to do, uh, but the others I'm just going to leave. I mean, I would like to do them, but they're just, uh, particularly as far as Guild Wars 2 is concerned, uh, I don't really think that they, they're very necessary. They just give you a good feel for how the plague is really destroying uh, the city. I mean, it's all about, you know, helping poor people and getting food for people and gangs that have started coming up and taking advantage of the plague and all that kind of thing. Uh, so, yeah. Here's a collector, though. With this plague running rampant through the city, the Empress forces are stretched too thin and a number of rogue guilds have taken advantage of the chaos. As a result, numerous complaints that have been filed with the Celestial Ministry. The Emperor has hereby declared all members of the Am Fa, enemies of Cantha. He has placed a bounty on all of the guild's members. Bring me five. So the uh, the Am Fa are one of the big sort of gangs in the city. Uh, they are like sworn enemies of another gang called uh, the Jade Brotherhood, and uh, we'll see their conflict quite a lot. A lot of the quests deal with them. They're just two gangs that basically they hold all of the power in in this in the city now, really. Um, and there's a lot to do with them, and they're quite interesting, but like I said, uh, as far as Guild Wars 2 is concerned, uh, I don't really think that they're that necessary to know too much about, so I'm going to be mostly skipping over this stuff, just so that we can keep the ball rolling. Canthor will make it through any difficulty, so long as the Emperor is alive. 
Uh, I will try and talk to people as we go through though. The docks are so empty, the so empty these days. People are afraid to come to Canther. Okay, that's the same thing. So, uh, yeah, a lot of the enemies we're going to be fighting out here in the city are the Jade Brotherhood and the Amphire and the Plague creatures. There is no hope. The future was decided long ago. The vengeance of the undead is upon us. Wow, that guy's pessimistic, isn't he? Uh, yeah, so um, th th those are the three kind of groups of enemies we'll be fighting, and all of them hate each other as well. The guards try to keep order, but there are few of, few, fewer of them each day. There is a guy with a quest here that I've just remembered, actually. Uh, and this place is a big labyrinth. It really is. It's <laughs> uh, I get lost here a lot, so I'm very sorry if I get lost, but I probably will. Especially with no map. Well, except for this map. So yeah, I know there's a guy with a quest somewhere around. There he is. This guy here is called Brian. Uh, and if you've watched the last series, you might recognize uh, what he looks like. He looks like a Crichton. Uh, he's not Crichton, but yeah. After the Char invaded Ascalon, I fled to Cantha with my family. We were just starting to settle into our new life when this horrible plague swept through the city. My wife and children all succumbed to it, and now I am alone. Some nights my grief is just too great to bear, and I wish I would just die. But I don't want to die in this place. I want to go home to Ascalon. Please go down to Ben Juckian Pier and see if there are any ships willing to take me back. Okay, I'll see what I can do. I'm in Ascalon at heart since my first character was from Ascalon, so yeah, I can't turn my nose up at him. Plus his quests are like, ridiculously easy. The Ministry of Fire never seems incapable of understanding the plight of the common people. So, uh, and there's a couple of quests here. Oh, I don't want to go that way. There's gang members up there. So, um, what was I about to say? Yeah, there's a couple of quests that sort of deal with... Uh, Canther and the other continents now. We're, we're doing one now, kind of. Uh, but there's one, well, actually, I think there's two to do with Alona as well, the place of the third game. Uh, but I don't know whether I'll be doing those. I'll just do whatever sort of stays in my way. So, yeah, look, here's a, a load of afflicted, and they'll be fighting the guards who are obviously on our side. And we can take advantage of this to slip past and get into the city, which is pretty cool. But yeah, it's just. I mean, it's so depressing here. Do you know what the architecture actually reminds me of? Um, have any of you ever played uh, Jet Set Radio or Jet? No, wait, what's it called? Jet Grind Radio and Jet Set Radio Future. That's what this reminds me of. It really does. I think it's probably deliberately styled like this. But uh, yeah, it's just, it's just unbelievable. And this isn't even the worst of it. This really isn't the worst of it. So some more guards who are running away from me. Very nice. Thank you. Uh, we're right near the the place now. There's something quite cool here. Um, there's a pug, you know, a dog, uh, in a trough there. <laughs> I don't know why it's there, but it's apparently it's quite a unique sight. I don't think you can see that anywhere else. Uh, and obviously a water buffalo. So yeah. There's also a rocking chair that keeps rocking as well, just here. Very cool. Anyway, anyway. So here we are. This is um. Oh look, there's Mox. M O X. You might have seen him earlier on in the episode. Well, you probably did. He is a bit of a mystery still. Uh, we will probably go to him eventually, though. All right, so here is the main the main uh, outpost. It's called Kaineng Center. Uh, in we go. Now, this place is huge. This this is probably, actually, one of my favorite um, sort of main outposts in the game. It, it's so big, and all of the stuff that you can do here is sort of all centered down here in this like beautiful little courtyard. Um, and there's dozens and dozens of quests and loads of people to talk to, loads of things to do. Uh, but then just on the outside of here, still in the outpost, you can like walk around on the docks and stuff. And there's just so many places you can walk to and see and do. Uh, but obviously but barely anyone ever does them. So I'm just going to give you guys, uh, I'll end this episode with this, uh, a quick tour of the capital city. Of just a few of the interesting things that I found on Wiki. Uh, here's the first one, there's a hole, okay, so that's not a very interesting thing, but you can hide in there. Um, and yeah, there's quite a few different things, so let's go through them. Okay, but I'm also here, uh, I've got a little list of the things I want to do. I'm also here because I want to sort of equip myself with some new stuff. So let's see what skills we can get, I've not actually checked, but this guy's got loads of skills as you can see. I'm just going to look through, uh, actually I'll pause it, look through them and then tell you what ones I want. Okay, so here's what I'm going to get. I'm going to buy a Signet of Capture, and that means when we kill bosses, we can get uh, really powerful elite skills from them. I'm going to get this pet, this skill here for my pet called Call of Haste, which means our uh, Suru is going to start running around a lot faster and attacking a lot faster. 
and I'm also going to get uh, this one here called Critical Strike, uh, which will give me lots of energy and also do a bit more damage. So let's equip those. Call of Haste, let's put that over that. And Critical Strike, let's put that there. And let's put the Signet of Capture there. Okay, very cool. Alright, so we've done that. Now what else did I want? I wanted to get some new armor possibly for my guy. Actually, do you know what? Let me check how long this episode's got. Alright, okay, so this is about 20 minutes already. So I think I'll end this episode here, everyone. Uh, we'll do our little tour thing and get on with the main plot next episode. See you then.